Hi guys, I'm back again too with another reaction video and today we're reacting to what's the difference between modern Turkish people and Turk Central Asians. That is something that I really wanted to know. Um, so yes, before we do start, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. My light's about to fall. Uh, anyways, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Click that bell button to get notified whenever I do upload a video. Anyways guys, let's check this out. Speaking, the country of Turkey is one of the most intriguing in the old world, being yeah. linguistically, ethnically, and culturally distinct from almost all of their neighbors. But they're a part of a larger ethno-cultural group known as the Turkic world, being Turkic. united in their uses of the various Turkic languages and Turkic culture. However, there are vast differences between the terms Turkic and Turkish and huge varieties among the Turkic peoples. Okay. Turkic peoples are unique as the dozens of Turkic ethnic groups are very phenotypically distinct, with there being Turkic peoples from North Asia, Central Asia, Russia, the Middle East, North Africa, and Europe. And these differences oh. largely stem from the conquests and migration brought about by a slew of different empires, which we'll discuss in this video. As mentioned earlier, the Turkic peoples are defined as any ethnic group that natively speaks a Turkic language, a language family that has been hypothesized to be related to various others, such as Mongolian or Erlin. The original okay, Turkic homeland has been postulated to be in Northeast Asia, or Siberia as it's known now, and the Turkic peoples migrated southwest into Central Asia shortly before the rise of the Mongol Empire, which nearly wiped out the former Central Asian population, or at least mm. heavily negatively impacted their numbers. When the Turkic peoples migrated into these territories in the 8th century AD, they gradually assimilated and mixed with the old people groups that lived there, an Indo-European population who were intermediate between the Iranians of the Middle East and Slavic peoples of Eastern Europe. However, the Turkic languages would become dominant in all of Central Asia, replacing the Indo-Iranian oh, languages. Wow. The original really? Turkic peoples that lived in Siberia are actually still around, and their phenotype is fairly North Asian, and most of the various ethnicities can be this seen is very in shades of purple on this map, with the Yakuts, Tuvins, Altays, and Kakis. These groups are all located in modern Russia, and Yakuts and Kakis are mostly Russian Orthodox, while the Altay are split between orthodoxy and animistic religions, while the Tuvans are overwhelmingly Buddhist. The Central Asian Turks, on the other hand, are almost entirely Muslim, and most of these groups mm. actually have their own countries, such as the Kazakhs, Kyrgyz... Oh, wow, interesting. It's kind of like spread all throughout history and all uh, across like uh, Asia, Europe, you know, all of those... Uh, those places that's interesting i didn't even know this you know very very interesting maybe that's why you have like similar features in a sense and that's why like uh like the turkish people that i see they either look like european or sometimes they have like a little bit like of asian features as well it's like combination turkmen and uzbeks although the karakal packs of uzbekistan Khorasani Turks of Iran and Uyghur people of China do not have their own sovereign nations. Because they're a result of centuries of intermixing, these Turkic mm. Central Asians are extremely heterogeneous when it comes to appearance, and all these groups are a combination of East Asian, European, and Middle Eastern DNA, causing some to look more Asian than yeah. anything, while others may have more European or Middle Eastern That's what features. I just said. But on average, the genetic breakdown for Central Asian Turks is about 55% Eastern Eurasian and 45% mm. Western Eurasian, meaning European and Middle Eastern. Now, the okay. Bashkir, Chuvash, and Volga Tartar peoples of Russia are a bit different as they have much mm. more Western Eurasian admixture than those from Central Asia, seeing their closer proximity to Europe okay. and the Slavic peoples. And for this reason, they're considerably more European in appearance rather than East Asian, yet some retain predominantly East Asian features, such as the epicanthic fold, oh. while others may be able to pass as Russian or other European. Oh, the Bashkirs and Tartars are also mostly Muslim, although with small atheist and Christian minorities, while the Chuvash are overwhelmingly Orthodox Christian Chuvash. and have a much greater Western Eurasian gene pool and generally identify more with Europeans than other Turkic peoples, despite speaking a Turkic language. Mm -hmm. The Nogay people are another phenotypically Central Asian Turkic group, mostly from the Caucasus region. The one on the right, he the looks definitely the Asian. Horde, which were the successors of the Golden Horde, which was one of the many successors of the Mongol Empire. 
Now, this brings us to the westernmost division, that being the many Turkic people groups of the Middle East, North Africa, and Europe, who are without a doubt the most numerous and possibly most influential in the modern era. Okay. But how did a language native to North Asia end up in Southeast Europe and Anatolia? The yeah. obvious Turks migrated from Central Asia around the 10th century AD and established the Seljuk Empire, spanning almost all of the northern Middle East, However, they were largely a dominant minority, with the initial number of Central mm. Asian migrants being fairly small. As mentioned previously, as the Mongol Empire swept through Eurasia, slaughtering entire villages and burning cities to the ground, when they reached the relatively more densely populated regions of the Middle East, such as Persia, Anatolia, and Mesopotamia, the death toll was immense. However, the gene oh, pool was... Oh, this is like... They look like my Iranian friends. Like that how, that's how I, I, I feel like Iranians look like. But I could be wrong. And significantly altered. Like where the Seljuk Turks assimilated the former natives of Anatolia, who were Indo-European speakers, in a process similar to the Central Asian Turks, however without the large-scale genetic shifts in the population. The Middle Eastern Turks are clearly far different in appearance than the Central Asian Turks, with various sources stating that Central Asian admixture on average is around 5 to 20 percent, oh. meaning that Eastern Eurasian admixture among Turkish people is minimal when compared to... I feel like if we all break down our genetics or heritage, we all have like a mix of something. But I really want to try that, like the DNA heritage... Uh, Thing, just to find out where exactly like can I trace my gene because I'm so curious and look at like watching this makes me think like all of us in a sense are not just like Turkish okay or me I'm not just like Filipino or Ghanaian there's more to it than just that there's like when you trace your DNA it's gonna lead to like different parts of the world so like in a nutshell, it's so crazy that we always fight each other when we are all like the same, like we're all humans, but also we all are a mix of this and that and that and that. So it's weird and also very interesting. To Kazakhs or Uzbeks. The Middle Eastern Turkic people groups are almost all remnants of the former Ottoman Empire, which spanned a very large area, including almost all of Southwest Asia, mm. most of North Africa, and the Balkans, and as such have huge degrees of admixture from the various oh. native peoples that surround them. The largest Turkic group would have to be the Turks from Turkey proper, which is also known as Anatolia or Asia Minor, who make up around 70% of the Turkish state and are okay. dominant in the Turkic world. There are also minorities of ethnic Turks in many areas So of the if world. you're Turkish, let me know like if you know where, if you are this Turk or this Turk, I don't know what I'm saying, but you get me, right? Like, do you know if you're 70% like predominantly just Turkish or like are you a mixture of the Eastern uh, the European side or the Asian side let me know I wanna I mean, it's interesting it's dominant in the Turkic world there are also minorities of ethnic Turks in many areas of the former Ottoman Empire especially mm -hmm. in the Balkans making up a little under 10 percent in Bulgaria with smaller amounts in places like Macedonia Albania the former Yugoslavia and the island of Cyprus Oh, wow. There are also Turks in northern Mesopotamia and the Levant, including Iraq, Lebanon, and Syria, and the region. They're everywhere. Turkey. Like everyone is everywhere. Cause if you like check, I will. I did like North Africans. Uh, how do you call this? North African uh, video as well, like history and where they're actually from. Most of them are also like Europe and Asia. Yeah. So it's kind of weird to to see that we are all just the same basically and when they said uh syria that is my birthplace oh but now what happened Ellie and are known as turkomen or turkmen not to be confused Turk with the turkmen from the central asian country of turkmenistan and their oh, language is yeah. somewhat intermediate between turkish and aziri and they're also remnants of former ottoman officials and settlers numbering around three to five million in total the oh, other wow. region of major Turkish settlement during the Ottoman period was North Africa, with there being over 10 million people of partial yeah, Turkish descent I, I saw in the one. Maghreb and Egypt, known as Kolugli, who were mm. mostly a result of Ottoman Turks settling in the region and taking Arab or Berber wives, although the Kolugli mostly speak Arabic as opposed to a Turkish dialect, 
or a separate Turkish language. Mm. Now, during the degradation of the Ottoman Empire in the late 19th and early 20th century, as the Balkans and Middle Eastern territories began to gain their independence, any and all Turkish culture was being enthusiastically purged from their societies. Oh. This unfortunately led to a mass persecution of the Turkish minorities living in the Maghreb, the Levant, and the Balkans, who were seen yeah. as foreigners and invaders. Oh, and during this fudge. period, around 1900 to 1920, literally millions of Turkish families from the Ottoman Empire and even places in the Russian Empire that had Muslim Turkic populations, such as the Crimean Tartars, were fleeing from these territories and oh. settling in Anatolia. Even after the dissolution of the Ottoman Empire and the independence of the Balkan countries, non-Turkic Islamic minorities such as oh, Muslim Greeks, the thing about Turkish people is Muslim so pretty. Bulgarians known as Pomaks or Bosniaks, who were Muslim They're Slavs, handsome. still poured into fair. Turkey in large numbers, fearing the backlash in anti-Islamic sentiments in these newly independent countries. These Aww. migrants were known as Muhajirs and were essential to the Turkish population, being one of the main reasons for the extreme population growth in Turkey in the 20th century, with the population growing exponentially after 1920. Oh, the wow. population of Turkey exploded from only 10 million in 1920 to almost 80 million today, a change of 800%, with the unusually high growth rates being attributed to the expatriation of ethnic Turks and other Muslims from the former Ottoman Empire, and exceptionally high birth rates, I think rates, I'm going to order a DNA test. compared to a country like Germany, whose population has remained fairly stagnant in the past 60 wow. years, while Turkey's has skyrocketed during the same period, although birth rates have lost considerable like, look momentum how in recent times. And there Germany's also a large like... number of non-Turkic Muslim groups from the Caucasus migrating to Turkey, such as the Chechens, Abkhazians, Ossetians, Kabardin, Lays, and possibly the most significant oh, of them all, the Circassians, who came from Circassia in southern Russia, where almost the entire population fled to Anatolia during the Russian conquest of the Caucasus, in the late 1800s. Oh. It's estimated that around 10% of Turkey's population has some Caucasian descent from this wave of migrants, and at least 20% has ancestry from the Muhajirs from Southeast Europe and the rest of the former Ottoman Empire, which has significantly impacted the genetics of the modern Turkish people, although it is difficult to determine just how much, as mm. Turkey hasn't held an ethnic census since 1960. The other major Turkic group in the Middle East would be the Aziris, who inhabit not only the country of Azerbaijan, but parts of Eastern oh, yeah, Anatolia, I remember Georgia, Azerbaijan and a large chunk of Northwest Iran, known as Southern Azerbaijan, where possibly more ethnic Aziris live than the actual country of Azerbaijan itself. Aziris are heavily related to and closely connected to Turkish people, with Aziri and mm. Turkish being partially mutually intelligible, although it's incredibly unlikely that they unite as a single country anytime soon. Okay. There are also other Turkic minorities in Iran, such as the Kashkai, and in the Caucasus, wow. such as the Karachi, Kumiks, and Balkars, who are all Islamic and are similar in appearance to the Turks and Aziris, along with one of the two the oldest Turkic I'm sorry. in Europe, that being the Crimean Tartars. And although Crimean Tartar is a Kipchak language, like Kazakh and Kyrgyz, Kuchak. because of the huge influence of the Ottoman Empire, their language is now closer to Turkish with some Crimean Tartar and Turkish speakers actually being able to understand each other. Oh, the last wow. Turkic group, and one of the more interesting, are the Gagauz people from Moldova and Ukraine, descended oh. from Turkic migrants from the Ottoman was like era, and as that such, they're one of the there. only Orthodox Christian Turkic I mean, I know Romania was, is, is a place, and genetically Moldova, are almost entirely Ukraine. European, having mixed with the surrounding population for hundreds of years. There are large diasporas of Turkish yeah, oh, pretty, and Turkic like, peoples all around the world. Everyone they showed in this video is just so pretty. Europe, mostly Turks in Germany, Benelux, France, the UK, and Bulgaria. Although this excludes Eastern Thrace, which is the European part of Turkey. Mm. 1.5 million live in the United States and Canada, mostly New York, Massachusetts, mm. and New Jersey. 200,000 in Oceania, and around 100,000 in Latin America. Oh, the Turkic wow. peoples are an incredibly interesting 100,000 in Latin America? What are they doing there? Parents being North Asian, Middle Eastern, European, and everything in between, and religion-wise, having Muslims, Christians, Buddhists, and even some Jewish groups. Oh. And they went from being a small collection of tribes north of Mongolia to one of the most influential groups in Middle Eastern, European, and African history. Be sure to let me know your thoughts on the Turkic peoples and the differences and similarities between them. Oh, and by the way, we just hit 50,000 subscribers, which is just freaking incredible. He's Thank now at like so 360. Be sure to check out my second channel, where I'll so. finally be releasing a Q&A later today. As always, I like this channel. Watching, it's very informative.
and I'll see you next time. I'll see you. I'll definitely see you because I'm going to check out other stuff. Like, I love, like, watching historical uh, videos like this because it just, like, broadens your mind and it just teaches you a lot of things that you've never heard of because, like, growing up, we don't necessarily learn about, like, specifically, like, Turkish history or, like, African history or, like, a specific Af African country history. So it's just, like, it's either generalized as world history and then it's gonna be choosing like the famous world histories and we do like filipino history and stuff like that but like i don't think i've ever heard about like turkish uh maybe a little bit here and there but not entirely i actually learned like the north african turkish kind of like coming together uh, just based on a YouTube video as well. So now let me know in the comment section down below if there's some sort of like things that were not factual in this video. But yeah, this was very, very interesting. And if you like this video, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Leave in the comment section down below what other videos like to react to. The original link of this video will be in the description box down below. So what's my social media link? So guys, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.